Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. It's great to see all of you here this morning on this Reformation slash Dedication Sunday. My name is Pastor Jim, and if you're joining us online or by video or in person, I'm glad you came to worship with us. And today, <clears throat> we have a, a couple of announcements, but today, first, um, this is Reformation Sunday on the Presbyterian calendar, okay? And um, this is when we mark and celebrate on the last Sunday of October every year the Sunday closest to the day that Martin Luther nailed his 95 propositions on the door of the Wittenberg Church in Germany. That kind of started the Reformation. It kind of started lots of other people to question the Roman Catholic Church at the time and some of their practices, uh, which got right at the authority of God and Scripture. And so, um, we mark this day because as a Protestant church, that's our heritage. That's where we came from. That is the basis of what we believe in. We're also celebrating today Dedication Sunday, and we're dedicating lots of things. We're dedicating our offerings this day in worship, but we're also dedicating our commitment to give in 2022. We're also dedicating the renovation project in our fellowship hall, two phases of which are completed now. So, um, it's a big day. And dedication of giving and reformation are connected because they form the basis of this body of Christ and what we believe in and how we practice our faith. So, uh, we're going to have a little liturgy and a prayer of dedication later in the service for our gifts and for our stewardship. And um, we'll be talking more about the Reformation um, in, a, in a little while. So, Corey has an announcement for you all. Corey Owens. Good morning. Thank you to those of you who have already donated to the youth group project of donating snacks to the lighthouse. And those of you who have not yet donated, it is not too late. We are extending the donations until next Sunday, so if you feel led, please bring in more donations. Again, this could be $10 to $15 gift cards to grocery stores or snacks like the one we have in the front of the church. All of your donations are very appreciated and will be used to help many people that are in need. Also, once we have donated all of the donations, the youth group is going to take the donations down to the lighthouse, and they are planning on giving us a tour of their facility. We are also extending this invitation to our congregation, so keep a lookout for the date that we are going. And on behalf of the youth group, thank you all for all of your donations. Also, don't forget about church, um, about the church event that we have after church. Um, this is a gathering with lots of food, crafts, and pumpkin de decorating. This is for all ages, so please join us. Thank you. Thank you, Corey. There's lots of pumpkins down there, too. So come and decorate. Um, today, we're going to do something else a little bit different in that right before our dedication, liturgy, and prayer of our gifts, we're going to sing an additional hymn. And it is found in your hymnals in the pews, Worship and Rejoice, the green one, on page 529. So get that ready now, and later in the service, we'll be singing for all the saints, verse 1 only. Let's be called to worship. Good morning, everybody. Good morning. 
Let's be called to worship with this prayer of invocation. Gather us together this Reformation Sunday, O God, that we may celebrate the witness of our forefathers and foremothers and the courage that gave birth to the Reformation. Teach us how to honor the saints of God in ages past as well as in our present days. May the conviction of your grace written on their hearts be one that forms our own faith Inspire us in the continuing reformation of the church and be present to us in your word and sacrament. In Christ's name we pray, amen. And let us stand, if you're able, and sing the opening hymn, A Mighty Fortress is Our God. Please be seated. As God has greeted us with his peace, so let us pass the peace of Jesus Christ to each other. The peace of Jesus Christ be with you all. Okay, before and because the Lord Jesus has instructed us on the two greatest commandments, and because we have not lived according to those commandments obediently, let us now confess our sins to God. In this confession, we trust Christ as our Savior and Lord. Let's pray together our prayer of confession. O God of mercy, we lament that even good actions of reform and renewal had often unintended negative consequences. Lord, have mercy. We bring before you the burdens of the guilt of the past when our ancestors did not follow your will and all be one in the truth of the gospel. Christ, have mercy. We confess our own ways of thinking and acting that perpetuate the divisions of the past. As communities and as individuals, we build many walls around us, mental, spiritual, physical, political walls that result in discrimination and violence. Forgive us, Lord. Lord, have mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Christ is the way, the truth, and the life. He is our peace, who breaks down the walls that divide, who gives us, through the Holy Spirit, ever new beginnings. In Christ we receive forgiveness and reconciliation, and we are strengthened for a faithful and common witness in our time. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Please stand.
Please be seated. Okay, special Sunday for the student or kids. Kids R-O-C-K, kids rock. Miss Yurik and Pastor Carey, I think, are leading the children. I see Mr. Yurik is leaving as well. <laughs> children, let the children come. Don't want to miss it. Don't want to miss it. You don't want to miss it. Yes. Don't want to miss it. Yes, man. Okay. Please join me with in the prayer of illumination. Lord God, you have declared that your kingdom is among us. Open our eyes to see it, our ears to hear it, our hearts to hold it, and our hands to serve it. This we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. The Old Testament reading is from Ruth 1, verses 15 through 18. Look said Naomi, your sister-in-law is going back to her people and her gods. Go back with her. But Ruth replied, don't urge me to leave you or turn back from you. Where you go, I will go. And where you stay, I will stay. Your people will be my people and your God, my God. Where you die, I will die. And there I will be buried. May the Lord deal with me, be it ever so severely, if even death separates you and me. When Naomi realized that Ruth was determined to go with her, she stopped urging her. Today, as I said earlier, uh, the last Sunday in October, we celebrate and remember how the Reformed tradition was created. And this is traditionally called Reformation Sunday, which is the Sunday nearest to the day when Martin Luther nailed his propositions, which, by the way, were a matter of life and death. His life was threatened, and so were all of the Reformers for, for believing what they believed about Scripture and about God. Um, this began a split, as you would imagine, with the Roman Catholic Church. Between the, the Roman Catholic Church, the Church of the World that, in that time, and the Protestant churches that were reforming. And so I thought it might be helpful for our understanding of the Reformation to briefly mention the basic things that they were challenging in the Roman Catholic Church. And Luther's three main points in his declarations were, number one, indulgences were wrong. The Pope, number two, the Pope had no authority over purgatory. And number three, <laughs> pay no attention to that man behind the curtain. <clears throat> Where was I? Number three. Indulgences were giving people a false sense of security about their eternal salvation. Now, there were many other facets and many other uh, twists and turns and, and I, facts about these false teachings, but Luther was pointing out that the only authority that talks about our salvation is God in his word in the Bible. Now, there were lots of other theologians that became involved in the, in the Re Reformation, including a gentleman that I'm sure you've all heard of, John Calvin. John, and Calvinism, which developed after his life, has received a lot of negative attention over a long period of time. A lot of it false, because people don't understand what John Calvin was really writing and talking about. I read an interesting story about 
the St. Columbia United Reformed Church in Oxford, England. Apparently a true story. Apparently there was in a far away and not often visited part of the grounds of this big old stone church, a toilet that was named the Calvinist toilet because it was in the dark, it was sad, it was a sad area, it was gloomy in that part of the grounds, and it, it seemed to be focused on making people sad and not enjoying life. And so, and that's how John Calvin has wrongly been accused of being sad and gloomy and, and talking only about things that crush joy in our daily lives. Not true. We need to be clear that Calvin was doing the right thing according to scripture at the time in the circumstances of his time. In preaching predestination, the P word, in preaching predestination, Calvin was doing nothing different from many, than many others at the time. And we need to recognize that predestination is in the Bible. It's in Ephesians. We should not condemn those who did what they thought was right and talked about it a certain way in their time period, even though today they would have done it a little differently. Today on this Reformation Sunday, John Calvin, Martin Luther, and a lot of others would say and tell you that faithful Christians and the way to live as a faithful Christian in today's world is by paying attention to Jesus's two greatest commandments. And that's what we're going to talk about today. So let's read about those two commandments in Mark chapter 12, verses 28 to 34. Read God's word with me. One of the teachers of the law came and heard them debating. Noticing that Jesus had given them a good answer, he asked him, of all the commandments, which is the most important? The most important one, answered Jesus, is this. Hear, O Israel, the Lord your, our God, the Lord is one. Love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. The second is this. Love your neighbor as yourself. There is no commandment greater than these. Well said, teacher. The man replied, you are right in saying that God is one and there is no other but him. To love him with all your heart, with all your understanding and with all your strength and to love your neighbor as yourself is more important than all burnt offerings and sacrifices. When Jesus saw that he had answered wisely, he said to him, you are not far from the kingdom of God. And from then on, no one dared ask him any more questions. May God bless our hearing of his word this day. All praise, honor, and glory go to him. Would you pray with me, please? Lord God, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be pleasing and acceptable to you, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So today... We're also celebrating the dedication of our gifts to God, all of our gifts to God. This includes our commitments to giving throughout 2022, our offerings to God of our time, our talents, our treasures on this day in worship, and of course, the renovations of our building in Fellowship Hall as stewardship of what God has given us. Oh. And by the way, today we also have that little celebration called Halloween, I think. And even though Halloween is the least important on our calendar of any of those things I just mentioned, what is the ritual that we all participate in on Halloween? It's giving treats to children, isn't it? And doesn't that follow God's commandment, giving to others? Even a cultural holiday like Halloween involves one of God's commandments. In our New Testament reading today, 
<clears throat> there is a simple question asked by one of the many scribes who was listening to Jesus' answer previous to this, to the Sadducees and Pharisees. You see, they had tried to trap Jesus in his answers by asking him a trick question about giving Caesar his taxes and then also about marriage. Hearing Jesus' truthful and scriptural answer to those questions, this scribe honestly wanted to know which commandment is greatest and first in importance. Listen to this version of Jesus' answer from the expositor's commentary on Mark 12. God, who alone is God, gives himself totally in love to his people. Therefore, he expects his people to give themselves totally in love to him. Equally, he expects his people to give themselves totally in love to each other. Giving to God and giving to others is the definition of this love that Jesus commands us to show in our everyday lives. In giving this answer to this scribe, Jesus sees a difference between him and the Sadducees and Pharisees who asked the previous questions. So Jesus recites the ancient expression of the Hebrew faith, the Shema. Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God. The Lord is one, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. That's right out of Deuteronomy 6. Giving to God and giving to others with your and my whole commitment of self, your heart, soul, mind, and strength. That's the concept. And understanding that the self cannot possibly be simplified into those four components only, especially in Hebrew psychology and faith. And that's because there's some overlapping in all of those things. But for this sermon message, I'm going to concentrate on those four simple ideas and relate them to our giving. Heart, soul, mind, and strength. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart. That sounds simple enough, right? According to the New Interpreter's Dictionary of the Bible, in both the Old Testament and the New Testament, our heart consists of these things. They're a part of our physical body. They're the seat of our emotions. They are the seat of our intellect. They're the seat of our will and our moral life. They're the point of contact with God. And lastly, they're the equivalent of our personality. Hmm. If you consider all of these functions of our hearts, it does seem to me that giving our hearts to God encompasses all of the love to God and others mentioned in our verse today, right? Seems like the same thing. Rick Warren talks about giving our love back to God because he first loved us. That's right out of scripture. And to do that with your whole heart means intentionally focusing your attention on God, the one that gave you your heart. And giving back to God, your and my love is the definition of true worship, according to Reverend Dr. Warren. And I agree with them. How many times would you say your heart has been touched or affected in, church, in a church worship service? I hope more than once. I hope a lot. So then think about the other forms of worship, the other places that you worship, because there's lots of these. How is your heart affected in all of the other ways you worship God? I hope lots of ways, and I hope a lot of times. Secondly, we are to give our, your love and my love to the Lord our God with all of our soul. Now, what is the soul? That's a deep philosophical question. 
then there are some disagreements among theologians and biblical scholars about the exact meaning of your and my soul. But let's assume for simplicity's sake, it's the whole person inside and out, right? To give your whole being to God means just what it says. Give your whole being to God. It is your whole self. You give up yourself for God's work, his direction, his guidance, his love. And in our giving commitment theme this year, receive hope, be the hope, and then share the hope, being the hope of Jesus Christ in your daily life means giving our complete selves every day that we're breathing to him. The Greek word for this text for soul is suke, from which we derive the words psyche and psychology. Hmm. This word is closely related to what we think of as our inner personality. However, biblically, this really means to love the Lord your God with everything that makes you, you, everything. If you are the extroverted, outgoing, gregarious, life of the party kind of person, then let your bold energy and your enthusiasm be reflected in the ways that you love God by serving him. And on the other hand, if you are more comfortable behind the scenes, introverted, introspective, you might say, quiet, reserved, there's a wonderful way for you to give yourself to God also. Allow your quiet stability to be used to glorify the Lord your God in any way possible, even behind the scenes. The message here, as you could guess, is that there are no cookie cutter disciples of Jesus Christ who give to God and others in only one way. That does not happen in our world. We weren't created that way. It's not one size fits all. There's no magic formula. Give your love to the Lord your God with all of your soul, not anyone else's. Then there is giving to God and others with all of your mind. All of your mind. Presbyterians shine here, or at least they think they do, right? For a long time, Presbyterians have thought we are very intellectual people. First Peter, we read, always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Presbyterians, including John Calvin, latched onto that verse a long time ago and have always been ready to do that ready to explain our systematic theology that's as deep as anyone else's to anyone for hours and hours and hours. We are willing to talk about it as long as we need to, to anyone. And as Presbyterians, we're very cerebral in our approach to faith, and we do not believe anyone should leave their brains outside the building when they come in to worship Right? God wants thinkers. He gave us a brain. We are comfortable in using all of our brain power to help others understand their faith and help ourselves understand our faith. In The Purpose Driven Life, Rick Warren explains that God does not want any of us to worship, give our love to God, or, or live out our faith in mindless ways without thinking. He doesn't want that. We have all been given minds to think about how we love God, how we show it, how we act it out, how we love others, how we live that way. God wants us to love him and give him our focused attention with our minds because he is focused on you with all of his attention. Rick Warren again describes this giving of your mind in love to God this way. And I love this phrase, when you fix your thoughts on God, God will fix your thoughts. 
Finally, we are to give our love to the Lord our God with all of our strength. The word behind this strength in the Greek is dunamis, from which we get our word dynamite. That's powerful, right? There's serious power and concentration of effort in this focus on giving. It's not merely physical strength, but instead it's a combination of all of our resources drawn together to give to God. In other words, whatever gifts God has given to us are given back and turned back toward him with all that we have. In Colossians 3.23, it tells us this, whatever you do, whatever you do, do it all with all your heart as though you were working for the Lord and not for people. Doesn't say you're not working for people. It says, act as though you're working for God and not for people. Again, Rick Warren says it this way. It's not what you do that matters. It's who you do it for. Friends, our time, our talents and treasures are put into the service of God. Nothing is left out. Those who can sing, sing. Those who can teach, teach. Those who can play the keyboard and piano, play the music. Those who are good with details, administer. And this list goes on and on and on. Give your love to the Lord your God with all your strength. No holding back. Now, up to this point in Jesus' conversation in our text today, none of the people listening would have been the least bit surprised by that first statement he made. This love for God, as Jesus described it, was not a new concept to any of these Jewish leaders or scribes. In fact, the Shema, as described in Deuteronomy, was their normal call to worship. But then Jesus added the words that got their attention about loving your neighbor as yourself. No one had connected that previously, loving God and loving others. No one had made that connection up to this point. Now suddenly there's a connection for all of us giving love to our God and giving love to other people. Jesus is saying to you and I in this moment, Hear, O Israel, hear, O people of Valencia Presbyterian Church. The Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and with all your strength. And you shall love your neighbor as yourself. There's no other commandment greater than those. I want to close today with a poem written by Tom Troger, who preaches, who teaches preaching at a well-known seminary in Denver. And he wrote this poem about this Mark passage, this passage in the Gospel of Mark. So listen to these words. If all you want, Lord, is my heart, my heart is yours alone providing I may set apart my mind to be my own. If all you want, Lord, is my mind, my mind belongs to you. But let my heart remain inclined to do what it would do. If heart and mind would both suffice, while I kept strength and soul, at least I would not sacrifice completely my control. But since, O oh God, you want them all, to shape with your own hand. I pray for grace to heed your call to live your first command. Amen. Okay, now is your opportunity to sing with all you have. Hymn number 529, For All the Saints.
please be seated. Today we are officially dedicating all of our gifts, all of our offerings, our tithes, our commitment, pledge cards. To God. Am I coming through now? Okay, excellent. Thank you. Um, as I said, we're committing everything and dedicating everything to God and his work, including phases one and two of our of our fellowship hall renovation, I think both of which are complete now. Are the bathrooms usable? Excellent. So when you join us for lunch downstairs, check out the new bathrooms. I don't think, I don't think I'd ever imagine saying that in a worship service. Anyway, so we dedicate that and phase three, which is still to come in the rest of fellowship hall to God's work, God's people, God's God's will in this world for this body of Christ. We're also dedicating um, all the rest of our gifts and our giving. So the uh, offering plates are still in the back. You can still give online. You can still mail it in. But these pledge cards and these offerings from today are going to be used in this dedication. So please join me in this liturgy of commitment to receive be and share the hope. Jesus looked up and saw the rich putting their gifts into the treasury. Now the whole group of those who believed were of one heart and soul. And no one claimed private ownership of any possessions, but everything they owned was held in common. Gather us in, Holy One. Show us the way home. And Jesus saw a poor widow put in two copper coins. There was not a needy person among them, for as many as owned lands or houses sold them and brought the proceeds of what was sold. Gather us in, compassionate Christ. Help us to see safety and hear welcome. Jesus said, truly I tell you, this poor widow has put in more than all of them, for they all contributed out of their abundance. But she, out of her poverty, put in all the living that she had. They laid it at the apostles' feet, and it was distributed to each as any had need. Gather us in, sustaining spirit. Enable us to open our arms and extend the circle. Would you please pray with me? Holy God, we thank you for this place and all the people that we find here. We thank you for the call you have placed upon each of us, for the call we have together. Give us soft hearts, open minds, and attentive ears this day. Help us to give ourselves to you and your call upon us as freely as you gave yourself to us. Only you know all that you are doing through your people in this body of Christ. Only you know how many hearts are turned to you here, how many kind words and prayers are offered by people all over our communities, how many hungry are fed, and how many disheartened are encouraged through unseen acts of kindness. Only you know what might be, what you might do in us, what might happen through us, if we would but put your call first and foremost and serve you completely. You have a dream for a day when every tear would be dry, when you would be all in all, when there would be no hunger, when every person would sit down to eat under his own fruit tree and every sword would be beaten into a plowshare. You have a dream for a day when your glory would be so revealed that the whole earth would see it together. And yet hope deferred makes our hearts sick with impatience. Our dreams have often tarried and we have often forgotten how to dream because it feels somehow easier than thinking that dreams will never come true. So teach us to cast aside our own dreams and to dream with you. Teach us to abandon ourselves and to find the joy that comes from investing in your kingdom with all our hearts and lives. Make us a haven of hope amid the despair of this world 
Make us a place of love in a loveless world. Make us a place that will be a family to those who are alone. May your kingdom come in us. Loving God, we present now what we have brought to you as tithes, offerings, and commitment cards for 2022. We also bring and dedicate to your ministry the finished renovations in our fellowship hall bathrooms. We also bring you the future for phase three of our renovation of Fellowship Hall. Place, place your blessing on all these gifts to glorify your name and draw people to your love. We bring things that are both visible and invisible. The coins and paper represent our work and express in a clear and visible way our love and thanks. But we also bring as an offering the fragile <clears throat> dreams and hopes that we have. These invisible gifts are what sustain our lives. Receive all that we have brought in love, O God. All this, O God, you planned in your compassion. Your church is special to us. Within it are people with so many different gifts. Thank you, God, for providing us with this place of belonging. In response, we bring our own gifts to use in your church. And as we do, we want to say how grateful we are to you that you have given us such friends. Out of gratitude we give, for you have given us much. We dedicate all these gifts and offerings in the name of the one who gave the ultimate gift to each one of us, Jesus the Christ, our Lord and Savior. Amen. As we do each week, we want to lift up um, prayer concerns, praise, thankfulness, anything that you want to give up to God. So what's on your hearts and minds today? Karen. This is heavy. <laughs> Thank you, Karen. Anyone else? Becky. Thanks be to God. Ed Sr. had knee replacement surgery on Wednesday. And he was already texting the men's group like a day later. So we all knew that. <laughs> Crystal. Yeah, prayers for peace for... Um, the entire family, the Michaels and all of them, on, on the loss of Lil. Let's go to God with all of our prayers. Lord God, we thank you for your presence here today. We thank you for hearing our prayers and answering in your way and in your time. Lord God, help us to be faithful. Help us to be faithful in giving and in showing our love to you by giving our whole selves for your work in this world. And Lord God, in this world, we have joys and concerns, and you have heard both in the early service and in this service of worship. So today, Lord God, we thank you for Ed's recovery from his knee surgery. 
We, th we ask your continued blessing on his rehab and on his work yet to come uh, for recovering. Lord God, we also ask your blessing upon our country and all of the violence that is happening. You are the Prince of Peace. Send your peace to be enacted by your people throughout the world and allow us to be your hands and feet in bringing peace and justice wherever it is needed. We, li we lifted up early a granddaughter, Katie, for a healthy delivery tomorrow and ask your blessing upon her for good health and a healthy baby. It is indeed a joy to bring a birth of a child into this world. So we ask your blessing upon the whole family during this time. Lord God, we thank you for allowing us to give of ourselves in many ways, either our baby bottle campaign or food for the lighthouse, in all of those ways, we trust that you will bless our giving by multiplying it and spreading it so that your work would be done, your will would be done, and your love would be shown to many others. We ask your blessing upon the Lil Winning family on the loss of Lil recently. Give them your peace, extend them your hand of healing, and help them to celebrate and remember Lil's life. And Lord God, be with them constantly. Walk with them in the coming days and weeks. Lord God, we thank you that um, you have been here with us today. We thank you for gathering your people in your name. Help us to glorify you in all that we do and say today, tomorrow, and always. For it's in your strong, the strong name of Jesus, your son, that we pray these things as he taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Please join me now in singing for the life that you have given. could ask or imagine. Be all glory in the church and in Christ Jesus, his Son, our Lord and Savior, throughout all generations. So go with the love of God, the peace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the fellowship, guidance, and strength of the Holy Spirit today and every day. Amen.